My guest is Peter O'Reilly. He's the executive vice president of club business and league events for the NFL. Peter and his staff are responsible for overseeing all the operations for the Super Bowl and Super Bowl week. He's been gracious enough to join me annually on Sports Business Radio for the last several years. I always look forward to this conversation. Peter, thanks for joining me. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for having me back. It's great to uh, great to have our annual visit here. Yeah, I mean, we're never going to get a better perspective than from you for the upcoming Super Bowl. So let's start with, this is the fourth time that Arizona is hosting the Super Bowl. And gosh, the three previous games were all nail biters. They came down to the end. They were very successful weeks in Arizona. But what's unique about this time around for Arizona? Yeah, Super Bowl, like you said, there have been some amazing games in the Valley and, uh, you know, great ones. And uh, that first, that Super Bowl 49 was the first year I was in this role. So that one uh, still has a special place in my heart and I learned a ton. Uh, and it's actually the most viewed Super Bowl of all time. So that's the bar we're trying to, to leave wow. for this year. But, uh, you know, now, eight years later, um, the Super Bowls continue to grow every year and uh, and the, the Valleys continue to grow the opportunity to create more events and ways for fans who won't necessarily be in State Farm Stadium to experience the Super Bowl has continued to grow. So there were things that didn't exist at Super Bowl 49, um, even something that's going to take place Monday night, like Super Bowl opening night. Back in 49, it was still the traditional media day on a Tuesday, great event, but it's, you know, that the week continues to expand, and that's the focus on Again, for that fan who may not be fortunate enough to be in State Farm Stadium, how do you create ways for those fans to experience the Super Bowl and all that it's about? Yeah. So let's start with opening night on Monday. Um, tell our audience how that's changed and evolved. I know it's at the Footprint Center where the Suns play. So what is that going to be like? Yeah, that is, you know, it's also interesting because we're coming off two um, unique years. Obviously, Super Bowl 55 in Tampa was completely impacted by the pandemic and um, was a limited capacity game. We definitely didn't have an opening night. There were, you know, teams came in later. Even last year in Los Angeles, um, teams came in later in the week. We didn't do a traditional opening night. So we're flexing that muscle again and remembering mm -hmm. what o Super Bowl opening night can be. And that event, um, that sets the tone for the week. And that is, we're going to you know, have a, a packed footprint center of fans in downtown Phoenix. That's the chance to see those Eagles and Chiefs players for the first time, those coaches, the one time other than game day where they're actually together in the same location and creating a lot of fun fan experiences around that. And that's obviously an in-person event, but a great live event on NFL Network, ESPN, FS1, where it, it, it comes to life. And Media Day was great, and there was always wackiness to it. This has now become a big fan event to kick off the week and uh, interesting new partner for it, our, our partnership with Gatorade on Fast Twitch. So they're the presenting partner of the event um, and that venture that we're involved in with Gatorade on Fast Twitch. Also happening in downtown Phoenix is the Super Bowl experience. And I went to the Super Bowl experience in Los Angeles last year and it just grows every year. And you guys bring more and more elements into the Super Bowl experience for the fans. What's that going to be like in downtown Phoenix this year? Yeah, we've got a great location at the at the Phoenix Convention Center for Super Bowl Experience, which is presented by our great partner Lowe's. And that that footprint, which which actually opens today as we're speaking, the, I was just looking at the I'm here in Vegas, but looking at pictures from Phoenix of lines wrapped around the street to get into the early opening of Super Bowl Experience today on that that opening Saturday, and that's a it's a it's like you said, Brian, every year we try to add new elements to it. And it really is like an NFL amusement park um, for fans to come in if they want to be hands on. And, you know, we've added more technology to things like the 40 yard dash and testing their skills and all of those things. And then just the other things that fans love, which is seeing players, meeting players, getting autographs, and then a huge youth and family component where you can go in and play flag football and learn skills. So we've got the We've got the experience at the convention center and then working with the Arizona Super Bowl host committee, we've got a free outdoor experience downtown as well at Hans Park that opens up uh, Thursday later in the week. So you've kind of got that dual opportunity. They're also at Hans Park will be the first ever um, game viewing event at the Super Bowl. So in downtown Phoenix, again, if you're not able to be in State Farm, 
You can be in, in Hans Park for a great vibe to watch the Super Bowl outdoors on hopefully a beautiful evening. So we keep trying to add in new elements that are, uh, you know, hopefully, certainly fan friendly. Yeah, I love it. Uh, NFL honors. Last year, you moved it to Thursday. You're keeping it Thursday this year. I actually like that, Peter. It's a better TV viewing night. Um, I think you're a few days in front of the Super Bowl, the game itself, instead of the night before. That's also in downtown Phoenix. Kelly Clarkson is hosting. This is going to be a big deal again. It is. NFL Honors is such a special night. It is the best of the best there. And like you said, we made the decision last year in L.A. to go to Thursday night in prime time um, for a number of reasons. Just clearly Thursday night is a bigger TV audience. There are more people home watching television. So an opportunity, again, to have a real anchor element in the middle of the week there. Um, there's a ton going on on Saturday night, the night before the Super Bowl. So creating that, the momentum and energy of that Thursday night event, we got a beautiful location in downtown Phoenix at Symphony Hall, Kelly Clarkson, a great host. And then just the moments in this show are going to be really, really special. Clearly we're going to be announcing the MVP and rookie of the year, but always special is that Walter Payton NFL man of the year announcement, incredible group of 32 nominees, the pro football hall of fame class announced and just that mix of really that brotherhood of NFL players together celebrating the season that was with the celebrity element. And we were, you know, we were debating because in LA it's easy to get, you know, celebs on a, on a Thursday night. They, you know, they're, they're all over the place, but there have been no shortage of celebs and players looking to ensure they're in early on Thursday to be part of NFL honors this year, which is presented by our great partner Invisalign. So, okay, I mean, it seems like Thursday is the night for NFL honors. It, it worked last year. I think it's going to work great this year. I think it's a, a really good decision. And then the other thing I love about the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award is not only do you win the award and get recognized for your community service, but I love the little element that you guys have added where they have the little logo on the back of their helmet. So the, you play the rest of your career and you're known – as a Walter Payton award winner. I think that's really cool, Peter. Yeah, it's great. That 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 logo means, you know, so much to them. That's the that's the greatest individual honor, you know, then you look to hopefully make it in the Hall of Fame as well, but that that's huge. So, it's both those 32 nominees have that that logo on their helmet and then that winner actually has the the logo on their on their jersey patch once they win. So that national winner has an even more prominent recognition of that jersey patch you see that on the the russell wilsons and the others who are previous winners who are out there jj watt who wore it this year before retiring all right let's talk about the game itself these are two fan bases that travel very well rabid fan bases from philadelphia and kansas city like you said a few minutes ago you know a couple of years ago we had the pandemic last year we still had vaccines and you know, you weren't at full operating capacity. You're back to full operating capacity. You've got these two rabid fan bases. I've got to think this is a recipe for maybe the highest price ticket we've seen for a Super Bowl. Yeah, we'll we'll see on the on the secondary market. I'm sure I'm sure you're referring to, and and I think that that is you do. Eagles fans and Chiefs fans are are some of the best in the league. Um, you've got a destination market in Arizona where you've got some some cold weather ripping across the country, and an opportunity yeah. to get to get to the Valley and enjoy that. And um, clearly teams who have had some success in recent years and, and have a great tradition of success, but a huge opportunity to come and enjoy it. So we're seeing um, really strong demand for sure from partners like On Location, who's selling packages to the Super Bowl, um, as well as what, what we're seeing on the secondary market. But those two teams, they come into town uh, tomorrow. So they'll be in, they'll be in Arizona starting tomorrow and then, then there for the week. So, uh, a ton of excitement uh, in terms of, of being there on the ground. So I think the streets of Phoenix and Scottsdale and Tempe are going to be teaming with Eagles and Chiefs fans. All right, let's talk about the Apple Music Halftime Show. The Halftime Show last year and the Halftime Show that I was at in Arizona with Katy Perry. So last year was, you know, Dr. Dre and Eminem. And I mean, just an incredible production. Being there in that stadium and seeing how fast they put it together and then how fast they broke it down was remarkable. But Rihanna is one of the biggest performers in the world. Um, tell us about the halftime show this year. Yeah, the the Apple Music Super Bowl halftime show, and we're thrilled to have Apple Music in as a partner who's been tremendous. Um, 
uh, Rihanna is going to put on an incredible show. Obviously, she has not been on stage in a while. So this yeah. is a big, big opportunity for her to really showcase what is, as everyone knows, just an incredible catalog of music um, and great energy. So they've been uh, they've been in rehearsals for, for a number of weeks now. That now shifts to uh, rehearsals in the stadium starting this weekend. So you start to see the show coming to life and what will be incredible energy. So this is um, this is going to be a special show. So I encourage people to really, you know, uh, obviously, uh, hopefully everyone's already tuning in, but it'll be a really special show. And the intricacy that you described there, Brian, of, of getting that that complex show set up and, and ready to go in the building and in a very short amount of time, that that tight, you know, 12, 13 minute show and then getting it off is an area we focus a ton on. Um, especially in an environment where we're on a grass field in Arizona, a field that uniquely lives outside the building and then comes inside the building. Um, so those dynamics operationally are things that we spend a lot of time on. We've got a great partner um, in Rock Nation and their production partner, DPS, who we work hand in glove uh, with to make it all uh, come together. Give our audience a little bit of insight. Like how many rehearsals are they doing at State Farm Stadium at the venue to be able to get on quickly, get off quickly, because it's not just about Rihanna and her performers. It's also the ops people, like, getting everything on quickly and then off quickly. Yeah, so they've been um, probably fewer than you would think because we really need to, you know, there's a there's the balance of protecting the field and making right. sure. So there's a lot of off-site rehearsals in big spaces that allow you to do a lot of that operational kind of the way you see a little bit in the background if you're watching on tv and see if you're at the game the pushing the carts on making sure everything connects all the technology is set and then you're ready to go but really today we're talking on saturday you know a week and a day before the game is the first day that really operationally things are going in into the stadium and on the field they've been rigging for about a month you know a lot of the the lighting and audio that gets rigged so that's in there early and then starting today you start to really uh, test the movements in and out. And then as we get into early next week, the talent, in this case, Rihanna, comes into the stadium and, and does a set of rehearsals. Yeah, I love it. Uh, Fox Sports has the game. You work closely with the TV partner every year. Um, this is a new crew on this. This is their first Super Bowl, Kevin Burkhart and, and Greg Olson. How is that different? A lot of times you've been working with veteran Super Bowl broadcasters. Obviously, Fox has done this many times, but Tell our audience a little bit about the work in advance with the broadcast partner. Yeah, we work our broadcast team, you know, led by by Hans Schroeder, Ani Bose, and others. We work incredibly closely with our broadcast team, and we have weekly meetings for about a year where we're just on Zoom like this and talking through um, all the moving parts of Super Bowl. Obviously, as you said, Fox Sports is a is a veteran crew from the production side of putting on Super Bowls. Richie Zion. So that core production team, Mike Davies and the operations team, they are the best of the best in terms of what they're doing. And then obviously they've got a great um, talent team in, in Kevin and Greg who have showcased their talents. You know, Kevin for many years and, and Greg is just a great analyst of the game that would shine through the playoffs. So um, it's a it's a really great partnership. And I think what you work on with them is certainly they know um, – better than anyone how to put on the game and tell the stories of the game. And we work with them on all of the other surrounding pieces. And um, they spend as much time with us as anything on those moments, those special moments in pregame, how halftime comes together. What's the, what's the feel around the stadium? Fox has a gorgeous set that's being built on. Uh, if you've, those who have seen been at, at state farm stadium on the great lawn at state farm stadium, a really great Fox sports set there that looks on to state farm stadium and, what's already on there, the beautiful 50, Super Bowl 57 graphic that will be lit up. So um, no no detail is uh, is too small in terms of making sure Super Bowl Sunday comes off in a, in a great way on Fox. Just a couple minutes left before I know you need to go. Um, your day on Super Bowl Sunday, you talk about this every year. Is it going to be similar to what it's been in the past? Give our audience a little sneak peek of like, when you're waking up in the morning and, and your entire day, that's a long day for you and your staff of about 56. What does that look like? Yeah, it is. Um, I the, the the core Super Bowl team, and that's uh, that's led by kind of our two leads on the event side, John Barker and Matt Shapiro, who play 
massive roles and 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 are you know incredible leaders across our team and then um that day is it starts early and um i don't start as early as some of the core folks on our team who are going to be at state farm stadium at 2 a.m and that's when you start to get those sh those that first shift of teammates coming in we call everyone working as part of the super bowl our teammates they're starting to check in you know i'll be I will inevitably up, be up quite early, you know, probably 4:30 or so, and then you're you start running into the day before uh, and get everything on your your day checklist going. Get over to the stadium early. We've got uh, a space like I'm in right now over in Allegiant Stadium, but it's State Farm that is our NFL control. So you kind of walk the grounds on the outside, do that morning look, walk the inside, and then you get uh, set, hunkered down in NFL control, and that's where, you know. All the planning is comes into play, and then curveballs always come up, but you're flanked by the best in the business, people that I could not trust more across every department, not just events, but Kathy Lanier and her security team, our broadcast team, our PR team. We're in one spot, and uh, and then you roll through the day. It's a, it's a long day, but the adrenaline is no doubt flowing. And you're not only watching what's going on at the stadium, but you're also probably monitoring the broadcast itself too, right? Yeah, you've got in that um, in in that NFL control we have um, in inordinate amount of monitors. So we are we are seeing obviously the broadcast and those components, but we also have eyes seeing what's going on around all parts of Phoenix, where you know buses coming in, you know every movement can be tracked. So you really see what uh, every piece of Super Bowl, what's going on downtown at that viewing party. So you see the whole ecosystem. Because everything, as you know, impacts everything else. So you need to have that ability to see everything going on. Last question. You're joining me from Las Vegas right now where the Pro Bowl is taking place. Site of next year's Super Bowl. Then you're in New Orleans after that. When can we expect an announcement of future Super Bowls beyond those two? Sure, uh, we are very excited to be uh, in Las Vegas next year for Super Bowl 58 and Quick plug for the Pro Bowl games. Really great reinvented concept. So we're psyched about that. New Orleans will be with us uh, next week as will Las Vegas in, in Arizona, scouting everything out. And then the process for uh, Super Bowl 60 and beyond is is in the works now. So expect to hear more of that probably late spring in terms of when we would be, uh, that we'd be more public with where plans are for Super Bowl 60. All right, I'm going to give you the annual reminder. Make sure that you hydrate and that you eat and that you take some breaths. It's a very busy day. This is one of the biggest events in the world. You always do an amazing job with it. Best of luck to you, and uh, I'll be watching. Thanks, Brian. My mother always appreciates that. So uh, she is 86 and going strong, so she appreciates uh, those reminders from you every year. Good. Well, Peter O'Reilly, Executive Vice President, Club Business and League Events for the NFL, thank you so much for joining me here on Sports Business Radio. Thanks, Brian. Great to talk with you.